All right, welcome. You're at the Board of Public Works meeting. It is Thursday, July 13, and it's a little after 8.30. So thanks for joining us today. Our first item on the agenda is, um, or our next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. It includes the review and approval of minutes and the approval of monetary outlays. Could I have a motion for that item? So moved. Support. Moved by Commissioner Burrell, supported by Commissioner Jaynes. Any questions or comments on this item? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion passes. Our next item comes from the administration, and um, it is regarding the Kent County Sustainable Business Park and Bioenergy Facility Overview. So we have a presentation today. Good morning, commissioners. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present uh, this program, this package today. Uh, we have a, a team here. Uh, it'll be a more succinct uh, presentation than our work session, but we wanted to make sure we gave an opportunity to, to share one more time the overview of the project that we've been working toward uh, to make sure that we've answered every question and. Uh, prepare for uh, some action requests that will be before you later today. Uh, th there's a team that's been working on this. It's a business development team, uh, both on the Energia side and the Kent County DPW side. I want to introduce Steve Faber. He's been managing communications and uh, just been uh, significant in making sure that we're having the right conversations with everyone and informing the process as well as we can. Uh, Yaniv Shearson, he's the Chief Operating Officer with Energia. Andrew Dale, who's an engineer, forgot his title, but he's one of those smart guys that uh, in the room, so we'll go with that. Uh, and then Steve Simmons, who's with GBB, who's been a consultant with us uh, for quite some time on the project. The action items that will be before you are, are up on the screen, but before I step into that, I wanted to let you know that yesterday the lining crew uh, arrived at the South Kent landfill to begin lining cell 56, which is the last cell to be constructed in Byron Township. Uh, that landfill, South Kent landfill, opened in 1982, and there's a little over 7 million tons of trash buried at that landfill. And unfortunately, there's a lot of value that's been buried over the years, but it was a technology that we chose at that time. Uh, but the last cell is being constructed, and we'll have that ready uh, for use later in the year. The projects or the action items that will be before you this morning are, are on the screen, and there's really four steps to this process. One is we have the Kent County Bioenergy Facility. There's a process where the solid waste management plan comes into a, a play here where we have to ensure that our project is consistent uh, with uh, the, the plan. There's also uh, ordinance revisions to the solid waste management ordinance. Uh, there's the uh, feedstock construction and service agreement that's been developed. Uh, in partnership with Energia, and then the, the lease agreement that goes with that. So a little bit about the timeline. Uh, as we thought about this uh, over the last few days, of course, it goes back to 2015 when we first developed uh, the visioning around 90% uh, reduction in landfill by the year 2030. And I mentioned that the last cell is being constructed and being lined as we speak. Um, in 2022, the Board of Public Works gave us uh, the approval and the go ahead to develop uh, the project with a project development agreement with Energia. And that allowed us to start a 30% design on the, on the project to determine what the guaranteed maximum price would look like, take a look at all the policy needs and all the various uh, infrastructure needs for the sustainable business park and the bioenergy facility. Along with that, you asked us to form a sustainable business park advisory group and Al Vandenberg, our county administrator, and his team uh, brought that group together, and we've met uh, almost every other week for the better part of a year and a half. Uh, and uh, I think it was deemed 1.0. We concluded our work yesterday uh, as a group of 1.0, and, and there's the promise and the desire by that group to enter 2.0, uh, and they're ready to be called on uh, when the Board of Public Works and Board of Commissioners is ready. Looking back at the process and the project, I'm confident that we have delivered the best project to meet policy goals. 
if we were to do it all over again, I think what we would learn is we're placing nearly 600,000 tons of refuse either to waste energy or landfill annually. And with that, we have to address how do you extract the value out of that material. Until you sort it, until you put it in its, its various uh, commodity piles, there's really nothing else you can do with it. So the project that, that we're delivering this morning for consideration does just that. It's a mixed waste processing facility that allows us to capture the recyclables that are not making it into the recycling bin. It's a bioenergy facility that takes a significant portion of the waste stream, which is organic waste, it's food waste, that today goes into the trash, tomorrow could make renewable natural gas, energy, and uh, fertilizer. It's a project that leverages public and private partnership. Um, it's a project that meets our current need and it's well positioned to meet our future need. It's a project that can manage the 800 truck deliveries daily to our facilities throughout the county um, and manage that material to allow the waste haulers to efficiently deliver that material and then get back on route and continue to serve their customers. And we believe it's a project that manages opportunities for the future as opposed to managing liabilities and risk around future landfill disposal in Kent County. So Steve Faber will walk you through uh, kind of the, the latter part of, of this schedule. But today we're at this inflection point, uh, the orange dot there, 713, uh, where we're preparing then, of course, to ask for your consideration on the project, which would allow us then to move the project uh, to the Board of, Commission, uh, Board of Commissioners for consideration. So the first item that I mentioned was the solid waste management plan. Both Kent County and Allegan County have a solid waste management plan. And one of the steps in that process that EGLE requires is that the project be considered consistent with those plans. In February, the Allegan County Solid Waste Planning Committee issued a letter of consistency. We both uh, undertook the same process. We had an independent review. There was a determination made through our consultant that we did in fact, the project does meet our plan objectives and it's consistent and it aligns really well with the upcoming materials management planning process that will start later this year and into 2024. A couple of related items is that the Door Township recently approved the plan unit development zoning that's required for this project. And of course, the solid waste permit that the state of Michigan would issue uh, is contingent upon that consistency process with our plan and with Elegant's plan. There's also considerations for the solid waste management ordinance and, ordinance and those revisions. Uh, the ordinance as drafted ensures that there'll be sufficient feedstock for waste to energy future, as well as the Kent County Bioenergy Facility in 2027. It provides a tip fee rate equity solution where everyone in the county pays the same tip fee utilizing a Kent County DPW <laughs> facility. It designates where that material can be delivered. It can be North Kent Transfer Station, the Waste to Energy Facility, or the, directly to the Kent County Bioenergy Facility. But no matter where you tip, the cost is the same. It outlines what material, and the what is, it's municipal solid waste. It's what you and I put in our carts at home. It's what the typical business places in their dumpster uh, in, a, in a commercial operation that looks very much like what we place in our cart at home. It outlines a, outlines a process for exemption uh, and for location and customers. 30 some years ago, we developed a process and it's worked very well for our waste energy facility. So we mirror that process, but it also gives us the opportunity to look a little deeper to see if there's uh, even better ways to walk through that exemption process. If approved by the Board of Commissioners later this summer, it would go into effect in 2023 but the compliance date would be later down the road when we're ready to fully institute uh, the ordinance to ensure that there's flow of material to the facilities that we're proposing. And then ultimately the, the system-wide tip fee as it's understood today, and we're continuing to value engineer the project because uh, we're at 30% design, not at 100%, is a tip fee somewhere in the range of 87 to $94 a ton. The feedstock and construction and service agreement that you have before you, that's the key provisions are, there's a 25 year term 
That's to ensure that the facility can be successful over the long term. Uh, it provides for the cons construction for the facility and it also offers a guaranteed maximum price. Again, with the understanding that we can bring that down with additional value engineering. Uh, it talks or speaks to the construction and drawdown schedules, financing and the bond issuance, the acceptance, the acceptance testing and performance guarantees that would be required for the facility once up and running, uh, the fact that the county will deliver processable waste, that there's a processing fee that Energy or the Kent County Bioenergy Facility would charge to process that. Uh, there's provisions for construction bonds and insurance. There's provisions for if there's a default, there's remedies and there's performance bonds that can be put in place to help de-risk the project where needed. And then there's facility design and equipment specifications and how the facility will be maintained. The, the agreement that you see there is 95% is ready. There's some additional schedules and exhibits that will be placed in there and updated over the next couple of months. And even at the point where the Board of Commissioners approves it, that is when bonding and other um, type activities will occur. So there'll, there'll be amendments and additions to the agreement as we move forward. You'll see in the action request, and I'll point it out then, that there's a provision in the action request to allow the director, corporate counsel, and uh, the Board of Commissioners to make adjustments to the contract as we move forward because it is a living and breathing document. Around the lease for the facility, this provides the opportunity or the access for Energia to actually build it and operate the facility. It's a 25 year lease, it's on a 40 acre parcel. It addresses taxes, uh, how or if the property and the facility can be assigned and sublet, the insurance that's requ required to protect the facility, indemnity, and then again, if there's default, then how do you remedy that? It's a nominal uh, lease amount. It's literally $1,000 a year, and the, there might be a question as to why. The why is that this facility will divert 51% of the municipal solid waste away from landfill. So as we look at <clears throat> various companies that would want to set up shop and be tenants at the business park, if it's meeting our 90% goal or driving toward our 90% goal, there's additional consideration for that. The other piece that's important to, to understand is that um, for every dollar that we would charge the Kent County Bioenergy Facility to lease that property, they in turn have to drive that back into the service fee that they charge us. So by keeping the, this, this rent at a minimal amount, it helps reduce the service fee that Energy has to charge to operate the plant. Future tenants and future operations will be considered uh, on, on, a, uh, on its own standing, if you will. And we're, we're expecting that the future tenants of the park, those projects will stand up on their own and the lease agreements will be negotiated in accordance with uh, how they meet our policy goals. Uh, with that, I'd like to hand it over to Yaniv Sherson from Energia, and he'll continue the presentation. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today, Yaniv. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here today. I wanted to give a brief overview of content that we've uh, seen before, just to recap at a high level the facility and the plan. <clears throat> As a brief update, uh, just on the Energia background, uh, we are a company with credentials and experience in building facilities around the world. Uh, we bring uh, experience building uh, over 200 facilities in the last decade alone, uh, many of which will bring the learnings and the successful uh, foundations to this facility here. Um, we've set up the facility to uh, capture technology solutions that are uh, successful and to develop uh, in other parts of the world. <coughs> Excuse me, got something in my throat. Um, but we wanted to show the resiliency of the facility and capture uh, opportunities where the facility will leverage uh, technologies that we are leveraging in other places, but bring in resiliency into the facility to pivot. So for example, if in the future, uh, power becomes more successful or desirable, we can add to the facility the capability to shift from RNG into electricity. Uh, there's been discussions and questions about uh, the concern about PFAS. So we wanna make sure the facility is future-proofed and has the ability to handle whatever future concerns or regulations may come our way. Uh, we have technology that could be added as a bolt-on downstream to handle future regulations such as PFAS destruction with things like pyrolysis. So we're showing here in the orange boxes, future components that we could consider and contemplate 
um, in order to, to enable the facility to have the resiliency and the future proving and evolve over time. So we know that uh, currently, under the current uh, constraints, we are meeting uh, permit conditions and regulatory requirements, and most importantly, the county's objectives of that 50% plus diversion target with a pathway to 90. However, we know that over the course of 25 years, things evolve, um, and the needs of the facility may evolve, and therefore, uh, having the flexibility to have different products or add-on technologies to meet future constraints is important. So as we mentioned, uh, PFAS has come up a few times as, uh, as questions, and so the orange box there is one that I wanted to particularly highlight as uh, something we have contemplated. We have this technology in the quiver, um, and if it should be needed down the line, it's something that we can, we can add on. Um, the third one is also to show on the box number three is there's been discussions about uh, nutrients and fertilizer products. Uh, one of the benefits about food waste recycling and organic waste recycling is that the nutrient content in organic waste that's currently disposed in the landfill is, is lost. It's lost forever, and it's, it's a shame because in addition to uh, the renewable fuel uh, value uh, and, and, uh, and producing a carbon negative fuel, we also have a fertilizer product which has macro and micronutrients and the natural form of, of um, a nutrient that should be going back to the soil. And in fact, the displacement of chemical fertilizers by putting food waste and organic waste back into the soil is an enormous benefit, um, primarily because we're displacing chemical fertilizers and, and two, we're putting the natural forms of constituents uh, into the soils. And so there's a number of nutrients that go in. We will be capturing uh, solid fertilizer product from this facility uh, through, through the drying process. Uh, however, there are other nutrients um, like, like nitrogen as an example that are recoverable so we can enhance the nutrient recovery um, in the future. But as I said, the, the technologies here we talked about before, the extraction in number one, the uh, renewable natural gas uh, and energy production in number two with anaerobic digestion at the core, and of course in number three, the fertilizer recovery. Um, the, the point here is to illustrate we've contemplated resiliency and flexibility so that, as I said, if things change down the line, we have the ability to, to pivot. Um, as a recap again, the facility at a, at a um, core function will be taking in the 400,000 tons per year of solid waste and producing those four principal products, the renewable natural gas uh, fuel, uh, recyclable materials, uh, estimated 95,000 tons a year, uh, water of course that comes in the organic waste that is treated and uh, met to effluent quality standards and fertilizer product. In addition, the facility has a direct uh, delivery for source separate organic waste. And this came up recently in some of the discussions about um, uh, industry and businesses that have either food, food waste rich streams um, or for example, schools as well that may have um, from cafeterias uh, uh, high, high concentrations of food waste in the, in the waste stream. So the facility is designed to also be able to offer uh, businesses and industry and uh, public institutions a service for direct food waste delivery that could either be in a source separated bin um, where, where at the source the food waste or energy waste is separated into a separate bin and collected or could just be collected in the current mixed waste bin but is of high food waste concentrations. For example, the trash bin outside of a cafeteria has mostly food waste in it. So that's, uh, that's that input stream number two, which is the 95,000 tons a year uh, designed. And of course, the facility has the capacity for more, but this is a um, expected design basis. And the reason that's important is because uh, we, we believe that having flexibility in the facility to, to serve um, beyond solid waste is, is an is a, is a, um, asset to the community. Um, and so uh, this can offer a, a uh, a, a low cost and uh, reliable outlet for organic, direct organic waste recycling. As a recap again of the facility here, we can see an aerial view of the, of the design. This is a rendering uh, based on the 30% design that's been completed to date. Uh, briefly walking through again on the, on the major components, we have the scale house there in orange where uh, trucks will enter and be weighed. The core processing building uh, within which we have the solid waste processing equipment. This is uh, uh, the building where the solid waste will be tipped on the floor on the right side and then processed through uh, machinery that uh, is incumbent in the industry, fairly standard machinery that will separate out the components, particularly the recyclable content from the waste stream. Uh, the other thing that occurs in that building is the separation of the organic waste from the trash through the 
the separation technology called OREX. Uh, we have an office space with a learning center. This is a uh, design so that we have the ability to um, have a, a comfortable environment for staff as well as uh, a, a large receiving um, area for uh, visitors, learning center, a view of the floor so we can educate on how waste can be valorized to various communities. Uh, in green is the digesters. This is the, the process that the organic waste through, through biological conversion, just like the organisms in our gut, are converted into uh, biogas, which is 60% uh, methane. The red is the RNG. That's the equipment that purifies the biogas into the pipeline quality renewable fuel that's ultimately injected into the grid and no different than natural gas that's in our grid. Same, same molecule, interchangeable. Uh, wastewater treatment facility. This is where the, the water that comes out from the organic waste is treated and to meet um, effluent standards. Uh, and then of course the odor controls so that we are uh, treating the foul air and ensuring that we're not um, emitting any, any odors and treating to a high standard. Uh, maintenance building, of course, so we have uh, um, uh, parts on site. And, and what is also interesting in the design is the expansion capability in the spirit of having a sustainability park where we can have co-tenants and, gr and growth. Um, in addition to the other parcels that are contemplated in the park, we have an area for future expansion where uh, the intent is to add on uh, additional technologies or partners that can come online and help us drive towards that 90% uh, diversion objective over time. And so that's what that, that uh, yellow box is for. Uh, another view here of the facility from, uh, from a bird's eye. Um, you can see here the, the uh, particular attention has been made to um, aesthetics. We want this to be uh, the world-class facility that it is and look like look as such. And so um, uh, it, it's really uh, designed to have a, a positive view from the entrance, uh, particularly where there'll be high traffic of uh, visitors. You can see the receiving building and the administration building with the learning center uh, is on the, on the foreground on the right um, with, a, with a welcoming entrance. And of course, uh, safe and easy access to, to view the facility uh, where the truck traffic is separate from uh, visitor traffic. Um, would you like me to speak on the schedule? So at a high level on the schedule here, we wanted to uh, highlight some, some key points um, in red. Uh, there's a number of development tasks that, that we've been um, diligently underway uh, uh, during the 2023 timeframe. Uh, we are on track. Uh, I'm really uh, proud and grateful for the partnership and the successful collaboration with the Kent County team. Uh, and so we are uh, at an inflection point uh, where completion of the, the tasks, particularly on the design front that Dar mentioned, advancing that 30% design uh, to, a, to a, a, a GMP, where we will endeavor to value engineer and, and bring down the cost as we uh, get details on the design, uh, is converging upon uh, that red dot in the Q1 of 2024 that uh, is attainable. It's, um, it's an aggressive timeline, but absolutely obtainable. And our intent is to, uh, subject to approvals, of course, um, continue with the final design, uh, have uh, be in a position to start construction in the Q1 of 24, and that will enable uh, the, the construction and startup so that we can have a successful launch Q1 of 27. And that, that would be the full operations uh, term, the commencement of the 25-year operations term. Okay, I'll pass it over. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I uh, just wanted to outline a little bit of what's, what happens next. Uh, so over the next month and a half, and then moving forward into the next six months and the next year. So uh, I also wanted, before I start that, to mention that um, Harvey Koning is on the Zoom call. Uh, Harvey is uh, from Barnum and has represented us in the service agreement uh, uh, process. So just wanted everyone to be aware. Um, so what's happening next? Uh, so as after today, uh, pending your approval, uh, the Board of Commissioners would review the ordinance through the Legislative Committee and the financing components through uh, finance, uh, then moving, as you saw on the timeline, toward a decision point uh, at the end of the month. Uh, as Dar mentioned, yesterday we completed our 1.0 with the uh, Sustainable Business Park Stakeholder Advisory Group. 
Again, that represented municipalities, it represented the industry, it represented a variety of stakeholders. Uh, that group did reach uh, consensus uh, yesterday, general consensus on the direction of this project and building an integrated waste management system. It doesn't mean everyone in the group agreed to every detail along the way, but there was general consensus on, on moving forward uh, and a commitment to continue to work on those issues uh, that are outlined in that report, which we'll, we'll get to you. Uh, a lot of considerations moving forward, ways that we can improve this this project, ways that we can make sure to land it in a way that uh, doesn't cause as much disruption, that really makes a seamless transition over the next three years to this new, new system. We are engaging the Upjohn Institute to uh, begin an economic impact study uh, that was encouraged during our work session to really understand the full uh, total impact of this uh, investment in our community and what that would look like uh, for our community. As Dar mentioned, we have several agreements and, and uh, components that we need to finalize uh, over the next uh, couple months as well, uh, outlined in that service agreement. And then we're also committed to exploring this industrial development district. We did confirm that, that this project would be eligible. It, we would be able to pursue that, uh, as well as the tax, in, tax increment financing um, to understand better how we might uh, capture some of the, the, the tax from this uh, and future so those are under development. Uh, thank you for the input at the work session to begin that work. Pending approval, if we move forward, uh, there's some, you know, the, it's one of those, uh, great, now the work really begins. Uh, so uh, we really start to go aggressively into the financing and the bond issuance uh, in conjunction with Energia, the county side and the private side. Uh, we begin really developing the ordinance procedures. So the ordinance uh, that's in front of you is, is the legal document. It really outlines uh, what it is, but it doesn't outline, so how are you going to do it? Uh, that's really up to us to continue to work with the industry, continue to work with the community around some of what we talked about earlier, the exemption process. Uh, how does this, how do we notify? How do we kind of work through this? Again, the, the um, compliance date is set in the future. Uh, it, the ordinance goes into effect, but it's not enforceable until we decide that it is, which we wouldn't make enforceable until there's actually a facility that can handle that material. So we do have two and a half, three years to continue to work on the procedures and the rules and the administration of that. Uh, we begin the 100% design and value engineering. So we know, uh, you know, at 30% design, we know that uh, there are aspects of this project where we can value engineer. When we look at our other facilities, for instance, the North Kent Transfer Station, our administrative building, through that 100% design, we were able to take 7% out of those projects uh, by going through that process. We anticipate this will be similar. We are going to pursue additional grant funding. Uh, as many of you are aware, the Michigan Public Service Commission just awarded this project $5 million. Uh, in the upcoming budget, they've allocated another $35 million that this project would be eligible for as a renewable natural gas facility. We will be pursuing those dollars hard. Uh, you also know that Eagle, uh, in the budget uh, designated $5 million for the sustainable business park infrastructure. Uh, we have an EPA grant that we just reached the next level on. It is our commitment, and again, we talked about this in the stakeholder advisory group, to drive down the cost of this project um, and to continue to look for those opportunities so that we can save dollars on construction, on operations, which then translates over to that tipping fee. Uh, the other main component of that stakeholder advisory group is continuing to incentivize people to do their part. So keeping the recycling center fee, keeping the source separate organics fee lower or in conjunction with that municipal solid waste fee so that there are incentives, there are reasons for people to do their part in this work. We're going to begin the project development agreements with secondary tenants. As we've indicated before, we have two, uh, two companies right now that are very interested in going to the next step. Uh, if we have approval, we would begin aggressively uh, going through that process and that project development agreement process with those secondary tenants. We begin site prep. So our commitment at the DPW is we've got to get this site ready for the Energia team to uh, land their plane. Uh, and so that's the roads, that's the utilities, that's all the interconnects, all those sorts of things that, uh, again, that $5 million from Eagle is going towards that portion of the project. Um, and we have uh, 
65 to 70 percent of that money already set aside to begin that work. Governance structure. So one of the things that came up again through the Stakeholder Advisory Committee is making sure that there's representation for our community moving forward, not only on this board, but in other ways. So uh, for instance, uh, Waste to Energy has had an advisory board in this new process. Uh, that advisory board would, would discontinue uh, as the agreements discontinue, as we hit our 40 year mark in 2025. But we're proposing forming this new technical committee that would really be uh, advisory, similar to what the stakeholder advisory group has been doing to really analyze and value uh, and, and look at these projects before it comes up to a policy board like the Board of Public Works. And then, <clears throat> uh, and, and also within that, looking at other structures. So one thing we've heard is, you know, it does, is there opportunities for an authority? Are there other ways that we might structure our work if this facility is part of our fleet? That's a big process, uh, but again, there is some time, there is some, some ways that we can look at that uh, and really begin and continue the work of building trust with our, with our partners that are out there. And then uh, finally, we mentioned it, but uh, the state of Michigan with the passage of PA 115 uh, is really mandating that communities, that counties begin their materials management planning committee process. So. Uh, actually, in this next round of committee assignments, you will see this uh, this planning committee. We need to form that. Um, we have, I think, six months to form that committee uh, per, the, per the state. Uh, and the driving force of that committee, again, is for our community to map out a strategy for increasing recycling and diversion of materials from landfill. That is what that group will be focused on. Uh, and we, again, think that this project uh, aligns with that goal. Um, <laughs> And not only for Kent County, but every other county around us is also going through their own materials management planning process. And this facility that we're building is really critical to their efforts as well. So again, outlining the future, this is the same timeline we shared about a month ago. Uh, we talked about the site work and really getting this facility operational by 2027, fully operational to take all of that uh, material. Again, if the county-wide ordinance, the flow control is approved and effective later this year, uh, we have time and we've set aside really time in the next year to work with the community to put those administrative rules and procedures into place. Uh, we're anticipating, well, and then we have the expiration of our current flow district uh, in 2025 and Q4 of 2025 is when those agreements and that 40 year flow district um, that all the six cities signed in 1985, uh, that's when that expires. And so right now, this new ordinance would overlay that and go into, it would be in effect, but then it would be uh, really uh, <clears throat> being enforced, if you will, or there would be a compliance date set for the end of 2026 moving forward. And that's really when that system-wide tip fee would be established. There is the alternate path, which we always have to talk about, which is if we don't do this, then we have another set of decisions to make. Uh, we would be coming back to this group uh, next year to begin the permitting process for the next landfill. Uh, we need to begin that process. Siting a new landfill is typically a five-year process. So we need to be in a spot where we're ready by 2030 for when South Kent landfill does close to be in a position where we would have that new landfill. Uh, there are costs associated with that new landfill as well, uh, estimated a little over $30 million. Uh, we have some high voltage power lines that need to be moved uh, to make this possible. Uh, that's a big price tag alone. Uh, so there is a process and a public process that you go through uh, when you site a new landfill. This isn't a landfill expansion, this is a new landfill. So we need to go through that whole process of siting a new landfill. Uh, we also have this inflection point with waste to energy where we will need to change the model for waste to energy in 2025 uh, because of the expiration of that uh, of those current contract agreements and figure out how that facility continues to stand up without flow control. So there is an alternate path um, and there are decisions that will need to be made regardless of the decisions that are in front of you. So again, from a timeline perspective, we're at 713. Uh, we move forward 
pending your approval, there'll be a, a work session next week uh, to continue to dive into the ordinance and the financing components of the project. We anticipate then legislative would uh, be looking at this at the beginning of August. Uh, finance would be looking at this later in August with a decision to come forward on the 24th. Uh, pending that, we would really be breaking ground on the site again in, in, later this year. Uh, and then we began the process of uh, spinning up the new facility um, and uh, yeah, really looking at how all of these moving pieces kind of come together by 2027. That is the presentation, thank you. All right, so a lot of that was review and Dar, did you have more that you wanted to add? Okay, um, do we have questions regarding the presentation? Commissioner Yonker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I guess I can present these to Dar, if you want to. <laughs> I think you'd be able to answer most of this. This is just putting into common terminology pieces of this contract that have I've been asked, and, and uh, instead of reading all the contract language, when the flow of the um, profits that this system will make. All right, so we have. A tipping fee that uh, will be charging to cover operating costs of the facilities um, then we have prod products that are being separated in the sorting system some of those are marketable the biodigester is going to have marketable where does that money go who receives that could you kind of talk through that process well for the Kent County bioenergy facility the anchor tenant the recyclables that are removed from the, the waste stream, 75% of that revenue comes back to Kent County DPW. 25% of that goes to Energia. The biogas, we de-risked that project where Energia takes the full risk of the production and sale of the biogas, the renewable natural gas, but we are paid a $1 per, I think, MMBTU royalty for every MMBTU that they generate, not only from municipal solid waste organics, but from the organics being delivered as a merchant material that Energia may attract from local companies that have high food waste or organic waste streams that they want to be treated in such a manner. Presently in our system, we have like two revenue streams that we manage. We do a rate study each year for each of our facilities to determine what's the cost of operating that facility. There's non-tip fee revenues, and then there's tip fee revenues. This facility, along with all the other facilities that we operate, we utilize every non-tip fee revenue that we can first, and then we conduct the rate study to say, how do we cover the rest of our expenses? And then we set our tip fee to, to cover those expenses, including capital refurbishment and all the other pieces in, in our uh, fleet. So one of the questions that have been asked and one of the things that we continue to look to is what are all the non-tip fee revenues? Well, we have interest on savings. We have renewable energy credits. We have um, commodities that we sell. We have energy royalties that we receive from the landfill gas system at South Kent Landfill. Uh, and I'm, I know I'm forgetting about a half dozen of them, the metal recovery that's pulled off the back of waste to energy, and, 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 and. All of those revenues are in, in, injected into our budget to reduce the cost of our tipping fee to the extent that we can. The example being our recycling center. We, all, the, all the offsetting revenues, and the majority, the, the main one there is the sale of commodities. Once that's determined, then this tipping fee is set based on the rest of the need of our expense budget and capital refurbishment. So the direct answer is that those revenues come to DPW. We in turn use those to offset the cost of operation. Thank you. Questions, other questions or comments? Commissioner Burrell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm assuming we're going to have some some liberty here, right? We have uh, under administration here. We've we've kind of a lot, a lot to cover and probably a lot of questions, anyways. Um, Dar, if uh, 
the, the Metro 6, six cities pull out of waste energy in 2025. Let's say this goes, this goes away. This sustainable business park doesn't, doesn't happen. If they don't renew their contract, costs are going to go up for the entire county. Uh, is that correct? If we're going to try to still operate waste energy, there's still a cost there. What do you see costs doing, I guess, overall? If uh, for some reason this didn't go through and the six cities do not renew, I think the over the umbrella statement is that the cost of landfilling is increasing. I think we'll acknowledge that first. There was, I think, in the waste dive or a, a journal publication that from 2020 to 21, the average cost of disposal went up 22 percent in the Midwest market. So we're seeing those type of impacts. Waste energy facility. Uh, the path that we see forward, if the Metro 6, and, and it's been communicated to us, I think consistently, that they want rate equity. And so that facility has to operate at a different disposal rate because the cost of operating that is different than the landfill. If the six cities, if the Metro 6 no longer want to participate in that flow district that was established in 1985, at the end of 2025, we would begin to look for merchant material, meaning there's companies that call us from around Michigan and in the Midwest looking for a zero waste to landfill option. Currently, there are companies utilizing a waste energy facility in Indianapolis that are based in Michigan, but we don't have the capacity to process it here because our first opportunity and our first responsibility is to the residents of Kent County. The challenge with that is that if we're not solving local community needs with that waste energy facility, I think there's going to be a question about whether or not that facility should continue to operate. For example, we think the city of Grand Rapids and other haulers will use that facility even if the rate is higher, but we're going to lose maybe a third or a half of our tonnage. So we'll have to make up that difference with that merchant waste that I mentioned. That merchant waste is worth more we can operate the facility with it, but we're no longer meeting Kent County's needs. We're meeting other community or other business needs outside of our community. That's where I see waste of energy going. I don't know if there was another question or if I answered it. Well, I, I guess if you, you did, right? I mean, what, what would happen to that facility? Uh, would we have to institute a, a flow control if that did happen? If I mean. We, I mean yeah, if we want to continue to meet the needs of Kent County with the waste energy facility, we would have to institute or work with whichever communities wanted to participate in some type of solution to ensure that there was enough material flowing to that facility. Okay. Um, we have, and if I can just mention, we have a power purchase agreement with, with Consumers Energy that goes to 2039. Uh, we negotiated a 20-year extension in 2019 and there is a 1.4 million dollar penalty if we uh, that we have to pay to consumers energy if we bring the plant down uh, prior to the 2039 date okay um, I, I do appreciate uh, again if you can indulge me here I'm sorry uh, chair I it's all kind of related a little bit here uh, I, I appreciate uh, uh, you and Steve putting in the presentation regarding the economic impact study. That's very important to me. Uh, it, it, it is going to have an impact. Uh, you know, I see in different sites, it seems like in some of the site plans I see, we, we have six potential sites and then others I see more, right? So, so again, this could potentially have a, a nice impact that uh, we're not calculating uh, in this uh, scenario. So, again, appreciate you looking into that. Also on the uh, possible TIF, I mean, I think it's important that uh, if this does go through at uh, the different levels that uh, Kent County residents have the ability, um, since they're the ones that are shouldering a lot of this burden, uh, and this is going to be in Allegan County, it's going to be indoor, and then, uh, then Kent County has no, they have no gain, right? We're not benefiting from, from the hard work that the communities. Uh, uh, doing so again, I appreciate you looking into that because I think that can uh, one potentially lower uh, tipping fees uh, long term for our community. Uh, two, I think it can also uh, potentially either pay off bonds faster. So again, I think there's a mixture of things that ultimately help uh, help our residents uh, 
lower lower fees, but yet um, you know do the right thing as well. So again, I appreciate you uh, uh, including that and looking into that. Um, I mean, my, my my votes down the line are are really dependent on getting this information, reviewing this information, and being happy with that information. And I guess that you know, along with that, um, it, it's the cities. It's the cities. Uh, uh, that you know being in Wyoming and, and being involved for so many years now it's very important to me that I have uh, the, the, the the city's aboard a majority of them aboard on what this plan is um, from what I from my conversations with them is that yes they do overall support the plan however right there is there is still some work to be done with the cities that they would be say aboard with this uh, and that would be uh, important that we continue those conversations and that uh, if, if I did have a yes vote today on these items, it doesn't mean a yes vote down the line if, uh, if concerns and questions aren't, aren't answered and, and, and municipalities aren't happy. So uh, again, uh, again, it's good work, right, where I think we all want to do better and we want to lead and we want to move forward. So I think it's important that, um, again, we get a majority of these folks uh, on board and, and happy with our, our our decisions. So, again, right right now, again, I probably have more that I can come up with and probably talk more than I have the last year, year and a half that I've been on this board. So, again, I, I appreciate you giving me that time. And, again, I might have a few more questions. Well, and we appreciate that. I think the advisory committee, the 1.0 that we wrapped up yesterday in this process, I think we would all agree that the project overall is better for that, there's additional perspective, ideas, opportunities that have come forward, including how to partner, I think, with Allegan County and Door Township around the tax issue. Uh, and that's something that we're working with outside council of Barnum, along with uh, the right place and Lakeshore Advantage, right. who's helping advise us what, what, what's the best path to take, uh, to partner with Allegan County and Door Township so that it's a win for everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Pekla. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and thanks to everybody for the presentation. You know, throughout this process, I think it has been uh, a great testament to the work that's been going into it that we've had consistent information when questions have come up. They've been addressed in subsequent presentations. We've had focus areas that come up in the conversations, and I really appreciate that. Um, I, one of the things I appreciated was this, uh, this aspect of looking at the resilience that's built into the system, the slide with the orange, um, with the orange boxes. And, and I'll ask Dar, is it, is it fair to say not, that not only are we looking at building resistance in the, the Kent County bioenergy facility system, but also that the system in general is a way for us to build resistance against the rising cost of landfilling? Yeah, there's resilience and resistance to that. I mean, unfortunately, inflation and cost of living and those things are always up, upon us, right? And uh, one of the things that we looked at for example, we, we've kind of we've done the, the math around, and Steve talked to that. How do you incentivize the right choices? Um, one of the, some of the analysis that we did is we could, for an example, raise the tip fee as proposed for for the overall system by two dollars, and that would reduce the tip fee at the recycling center by twenty five. So we would go from $70 a ton down to $45 a ton because you're covering the cost of processing 35,000 tons and you're supporting that with four to you know, 400,000 plus tons. So it's a matter, it's a policy decision, right? And that's where that advisory group or the materials management planning committee where Board of Public Works, Board of Commissioners, and of course all the municipalities can weigh in and say, what do we value and how do, what triggers or what levers do we want to pull to help reduce cost? The, the question around uh, food waste has come up significantly, particularly with the food, with the, uh, the school districts. When we look at that and we think about what, what is most of the trash that goes into the dumpsters at a school district, it's organic waste. And if the organic waste fraction is somewhere around 80% of the trash, that's considered source separate organics and it goes in as a merchant material to the energy as second door at a rate that's lower than what we're charging at the waste energy facility today. 
So those are the types of opportunities that are out there. Same with the restaurants. The restaurants are food and organic rich. They can move virtually their entire waste stream as a source separator organic. We showed a picture, it's been probably a while, where we showed municipal solid waste and we showed organic waste and you can't tell the difference because it's all bagged. But inside, the majority of it is organic, but you still have to process it out. The process that's been proposed and would be built with the Orex press and the other technologies that energy brings allows, us to, allows them to process that slightly contaminated organic waste without any impact to the end product. We don't have that today. Composting is really that, is, is the, the main way that we process organics today. Plastic bags, plastic forks, all of that becomes a problem because you have to be able to get it out of the compost product uh, down to whatever percentage before you can sell it as a compost. That's, those are the value engineering and the type of approaches that you can do to improve the economics around some of these solutions. If I might follow up on that, speaking of the economics, can you remind me how early we paid off the waste to energy bonds and what that could do to the system-wide cost? So I, I don't recall because I, I wasn't part, I wasn't here then, but we paid the bond. There was two bonds, essentially. It was the initial bonding for the plant, and then there was a second bond when the Federal Air Act uh, compliance issues came for MACT, and I won't get into the details, but we had to put it in air emission controls, and so we bonded a second time. Those bonds were paid off in 2012, and at that time, the rate, the rate in those early, those few years before, I think were around eighty to ninety dollars, just top of mind, and we dropped to forty-five. So certainly, the capex, the bonding, and being able to pay that off makes a significant difference in the tip fee. And do you have any sense of what caused us to be able to have the capital to pay off those bonds early? I think. It, um, Managing the facility well, staying in front of maintenance and staying in front of refurbishment, um, maximizing our revenues, particularly around energy generation, uh, help to generate revenue. For example, 60, 40 percent of the revenue coming from waste energy is related to electrical generation and the sale of power to consumers' energy. That's why it took five years and just a lot of roll up your sleeve work to get a new power purchase agreement that reflected the value of that electricity. So it's those types of efforts that helped. And so I think my final comment for now then is um, I, I appreciate then that the model of a sustainable business park here takes that previous model of successful operation then reducing the long-term cost of the facility um, and adds to it another layer of inviting new tenants or having opportunity for new tenants to then bring in additional revenue that would offset the variety of increasing expenses or the bonding that we have. Commissioner James. This is relative to the comment that Steve made as looking down the road the alternative of building a new landfill facility. The $30 million dollars seems really low to me in, in terms of the cost. Is, was that in today's dollars or the future dollars of when that, if that were to happen? Yeah, we had a Golder Associates, who's our uh, engineer that does a lot of our design work, Dan Rose, our solid waste management uh, manager and, uh, and engineer. Sorry, I lost it for a moment. And he, uh, he worked with Golder, I think it was mm -hmm. 2018 when they put that estimate together. Okay. So we took that estimate, but we did uh, add a, we put an adder in there for the crazy last couple of years we've been in and an estimate to move the power line. So it, it's a relatively good number, but it's an engineer's estimate of probable cost. It's not an exact, yeah. it's not an exact, it's not a bid. And it still seems low. And then the, the other question I have is, does, does that include legacy costs of maintaining that landfill in perpetuity? It does not. The, okay. that's, those are construction related costs, okay. design permit construction, okay, just construction, not legacy. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Other questions or comments regarding the presentation? Commissioner Yunker. Chair, um, another question on the facility, uh, just to clarify in common conversation. 
the uh, the the new facility for the separation of the materials that is going to be a big part of this thing um, th that cost is incurred by the county to build or is that a joint partnership with um, the tenant so the tenant the Kent County Bioenergy Facility LLC would be tasked with constructing the facility the bonding that's proposed would cover the cost of the building the processing building that was shown a little earlier along yeah. with the administrative offices so the county owns the dirt they own the processing building and they own the offices all right and that cost has been factored into that per ton tip fee not only the service fees that we charge across our fleet today the bonding that is necessary for this facility and the processing fee that Energia would charge to process that 400,000 tons annually. All right. So then the contract with Energia is to maintain that facility and run the facility, correct? So the contract would be to maintain the facility and run it. They're, they would own the, the equipment and maintain that. We would own the building. They could maintain it on our behalf, such as what we do with vicinity energy at the waste energy mm -hmm. facility. We have built into the budget a maintenance, a, a maintenance and refurbishment fee, if you will, for the building itself, similar as we do with our CapEx and CIP with the waste energy facility. So we work with Plant Moran to make sure that, given the size of that building, roofs have to be replaced, tipping floors need to be resurfaced, that that was factored into that overall cost that then rolls up into that per ton tip fee. All right. Thank you, Doc. Any other questions or comments? All right. Um, thank you for the presentation and all of the answers and responses. Um, you know, next we have four action requests regarding the sustainable business park and the bioenergy facility. Um, this whole process really started in 2015, and that predates every single one of us <laughs> here on the Board of Public Works. And I think previously the only commissioner that had been around during that time was Commissioner Bukowski, if I'm not mistaken, that still served up until this past year. So this has a, been a very long process. I feel it's been a very thorough process. And um, yeah, I do believe there is still work to be done. And after the decisions we make today, um, you know, those conversations don't end. The um, this is definitely a living process, a living and breathing process. And I would like to you know, continue working with our community, our municipal leaders, our businesses, in um, working together to create the best product we can. And this is definitely a um, public-private partnership, which we do well here in Kent County. Um, in Kent County, too, you know, this is something I've heard, like, oh, why do we want to be the the first you know, county to do this sort of facility. There's other similar facilities throughout the country. They just may not be paired together. But um, so we're not necessarily the first to come up with this technology, but I think we're making a really big step forward in how we manage our municipal solid waste here in Kent County. This is a very you know, pivotal point. This is a, a big decision. And um, you know, my time on the board, I've been serving on the Board of Public Works since 2017. And I didn't join the board because I had a passion for trash. Um, <laughs> I joined it to fill a role and to serve my community. And um, I've learned a heck of a lot about trash and talked a lot of trash the last couple of years. And I feel, you know, confident that this has been well vetted. We've had several voices at the table. We've had voices that were not in support, but have come, you know, full circle and, you know, want to support this project if we, um, you know, check specific boxes. And in the long run, I don't want to be responsible for citing another landfill. That's not what I want to do here. To me, that's not even an option, even though it's our, you know, plan B. I think we have two paths here. We have um, one path that gives us several options and the ability to pivot. And that path is, you know, going forward with the sustainable business park and the bioenergy facility. Um, you know, that is a, a project where we can tweak along the way, we can add to it, we can change it. That, that's not something that's set in stone. 
Where if we go with um, option B, which would be, you know, citing another landfill, um, you know, I think it's safe to say we would never have another landfill here in Kent County because the land that we have set aside is in Allegan County. So um, do we really want to have that space be another landfill? No. I mean, my county or my township borders Allegan County. It borders it to the south, and I don't believe my residents would want to have that in their backyard, especially with the the legacy that a landfill provides. And we've seen that in um, you know Plainfield Township. We've seen that in the northern part of our county, um, what landfills can do and the contaminants that they um, can leak out. So. I feel like this is definitely the best path forward and um, we don't want to continue doing the same thing over and over and as we know that's the definition of insanity. So I think plotting another landfill is just not an option. It's not something I desire to do um, for the future of Kent County and you know our region. I think this is a very pivotal project and you know moving forward I do think, you know, there still are questions about costs and things that, you know, businesses and um, the community are concerned about, which is a good thing. We need to continue to dig in and find the best way um, to serve our community in the most economic way as well. But there's still um, more to determine, and those questions, you know, don't need to be answered right this minute for us to continue to move forward. We've had several steps along the way in this process, and this is another step that we're checking off on as we continue to move forward on our timeline. Um, but we are up against a wall because we have a landfill that, you know, will be full by 2030 and we have um, expiring contracts with waste to energy. So if we don't make a decision here today, there's going to be several other even more challenging decisions to make along the way. So I'd like you to use that frame of reference as you move forward in deciding today. Um, and I would, you know, continue being open to having conversations with anyone from the public. I've had several calls from, you know, residents and they, you know, as they come to understand this project, um, you know, they are supportive because originally they've received some skewed information that, you know, originally turned them against it. But once they have a better understanding of our goals here, I've gotten the impression that, they're not in support of another landfill. So they want to do something different as well. So um, I will be quiet now and move on to our next agenda items here. And we have four in a row that are all regarding the sustainable business park. And commissioners too will have the option for questions or comments, you know, once each of these is put forward. So our next item on the agenda is item B from the administration and it's regarding the Kent County Bioenergy Facility. And it's the Kent County Solid Waste Management Plan Letter of Consistency. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request to determine the proposed Kent County Bioenergy Facility is consistent with the Kent County Solid Waste Management Plan. Kent County Department of Public Works has proposed the Kent County Bioenergy Facility, a mixed waste processing and anaerobic digestion facility, to be located at the Sustainable Business Park in Door Township, Allegan County. The Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy requires a solid waste processing permit, and DPW is required to apply for a determination of consistency with the Kent County Solid Waste Management Plan as part of the permit application. The Elgin County Solid Waste Planning Committee issued a determination of consistency letter on February 28, 2023. Kent County Solid Waste Processing siting criteria includes provisions for setbacks from residential, public parks, and schools, floodplain, wetlands, historic or archaeological areas to be serviced by Class A roads and meet flow control provisions of the existing waste to energy facility. Fishback Consulting, on behalf of the Kent County DPW, reviews solid waste processing facility criteria and the proposed sustainable <coughs> business park and the Kent County bioenergy facility to verify consistent consistency with the Kent County plan. All right, thanks, Star. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. So support. moved and supported. All right, questions or comments regarding this? Commissioner Jaynes. Madam Chair, thank you. I too was not appointed to this board uh, due to my passion for trash. I'm actually a representative to the board for the Kent County Road Commission um, as a commissioner on that board. 
Um, I just wanted to again reiterate um, my transparency that Fishbeck is my employer and pursuant to the Kent County's policy on conflict of interest I confirm that I work for Fishbeck. Fishbeck is involved with the sustainable business park but I do not work on the sustainable business park for Fishbeck. I have no financial interest in whether the sustainable business park goes forward, does not go forward, or goes forward in a different configuration. As such, my employment with Fishbeck does not meet the definition of the conflict of interest under the, under the county's policy. Thanks. Thank you, and thank you for informing me of that um, earlier this week yeah. and you know, from time and time when this has come up. So it's important to me to have that sort of transparency on our board thank here. You. So noted. Thank, thank you. you. For Any other? Four. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Commissioner Green? Thank you, um, Chair Brevi, and I just kind of wanted to speak to um, all four of these items as a group. Um, we've, since we're talking a little bit about our how we came to be on this board, um, I actually did ask to serve on uh, DPW. I wanted to be here, and one of the reasons that I wanted to do that was to find ways to address the long-term challenges we have with solid waste management. And when I served in Plainfield Township on the board, I had a um, front row seat to the PFAS, you know, issues there um, and found out that, you know, that's why I wanted to be here was because I thought we needed to find effective solutions for the long term and try to avoid that. And so that being said, I, I really appreciate the work that's gone into this so far. Um, I'm grateful for Chair Brevi's, um leadership. And I think that everybody here is working I think every, if you took a poll of everybody in this room, we'd all have the same goal of how do we long-term divert more trash away from landfill. Um, I think that'd be true um, even of the folks in the waste management industry with the haulers. I think that's something that they, they'd like to do over the long-term too. Um, but for me, there, there are still a lot of unknowns and uncertainty on this project um, and, and too many for, for me to support it today. Um, there's been a lot of talk about alternative proposals, but I don't think that we, at least my feeling as one of the members of this board is um, that we've had an opportunity to fully vet what the alternative solutions might look like. Um, it feels like there's a binary choice between um, landfill and this project in particular, and I don't, I don't think that, I think that's an oversimplification of where we stand today. Um, we've got a lot of really intelligent people that work for this county, in these departments, consultants that we've brought in, and I think that we need to be able to see the full array of what what the, the, the pros and cons of all those things, not between just a binary choice of let's continue down that road of, the, of you know, burning and burying trash to um, between that and the sustainable business park. So, um, and, and the other thing that's concerning to me, just seeing this interest of transparency is um, I'm concerned about what uh, the future rates would look like for um, residents in residents and business owners in in my district. Um, being somebody that represents an area outside of the flow district, um, they're gonna they're gonna bear a lot of the um, you know burden of that over time. So um, you know, right now we've got residents and business owners who are having a lot of trouble. You know, what does the bottom line of their budgets look like? And we're talking about adding on 20 to maybe as much as 200% increase in what they're paying for some businesses. Um, I'm just not comfortable asking them to shoulder that. So all that being said, um, I'm hopeful that we're going to find ways to continue to drive the cost down. I, I, I truly do believe that that's part of what's being worked on by um, the staff and with our partners at the state, the federal government, wherever else. But um, right now, I'm, I, I, I can't be comfortable with this until we eliminate some of those uncertainties. So um, I, I will be voting no on, on uh, these four action requests. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor of item? Should we do a roll call? Yeah, that's fine. We can do a roll call. All right. So all in favor, please say yes. All those opposed, please say no. But we're going to do a roll call. So Commissioner Yonker? Yes. Commissioner Jaynes? Yes. Commissioner Green? No. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Pakla? Yes. Chair Brevi? Yes. Motion passes. Our next item on the agenda is the solid waste management ordinance revisions. So this is a request to recommend to the Kent County Board of Commissioners the adoption of an amendment to the solid waste management ordinance 
enabling countywide control in the disposition of designated solid waste to allow for more effective and environmentally responsible waste planning and management. In 1985, Kent County entered into 40-year site acquisition and service of contracts, uh, the 1985 Combustible Waste Disposal Amendments, with the City of Grand Rapids, East Grand Rapids, Wyoming, Kentwood, Walker, and Granville, who enacted flow control ordinances to cause to be delivered combustible waste to the waste energy facility, constructed, financed, and operated by Kent County. The agreements between Kent County and the cities expire at the end of 2025. In 2015, the Kent County Board of Commissioners approved a solid waste management ordinance to implement portions of the Kent County Solid Waste Management Plan, including establishing a countywide regulatory surcharge to fund the cost of maintaining, managing, and remediating closed county landfills. The Sustainable Business Park Stakeholder Advisory Group considerations included the need for countywide flow control to support a countywide integrated waste and materials management system ensuring delivery of possible municipal solid waste feedstocks to the proposed Kent County Bioenergy Facility and Waste Energy Facility, and supporting tip fee revenues to sustain capital investments, bond repayment, and the ongoing cost of operation for the Kent County Refuse Disposal System. All right, thank you. Is there a motion for this item? So Moved by Commissioner Yunker. Support. Support by Commissioner Pakla. Questions or comments? Commissioner Burrell. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, for someone that's, uh, I guess, lived in flow control close to all my life, right, this is uh, nothing necessarily new to me. Uh, however, wh what's the process, Dar, and you know, perhaps I should know this, with, with what kind of flexibility do we have with this flow control? Again, if I remember reading this correctly, it does give us flexibility within our facilities, right, as long as we're providing the 400,000 tons that they need. I mean, what what's... Um, this this document is this a simple if we wanted to change it because we are exceeding or needed to make some tweaks is that a simple DPW action or is it a DPW action has got to go to the county board how, how does that work so Dan DeWitt who's uh, from Warner Norcross Judd who assisted us with this um, is standing by I'll provide the not so legal answer in case and, and, and if I miss it a little bit then Dan's here to, to get me back on track. We modeled this much in the way that we modeled the waste to energy approach, and that was waste to energy, all combustible waste had to be delivered to waste to energy facility, and then the department could make a decision as to whether or not we needed to move it somewhere else. So there are combustible materials that come in, such as skids, mattresses, and other material that's not suitable for the boilers. That material we exempt out. And so there's an exemption process that either we initiate the hauler initiates or the, the company that's generating the trash initiates. And through that process then we issue an exemption letter and that allows the waste hauler to bring that material somewhere else. It would be similar in this circumstance where there are certain things that are in flow, which would be municipal solid waste, or other things that we accept that are not subject to this, such as construction, demolition, debris, and other materials that will continue to flow in at our facilities at a market rate. We're addressing municipal solid waste. There's administrative rules uh, that are in a process within the document that we used when we implemented the surcharge. We'll use a similar process here. What's been discussed at the advisory committee level is that the technical committee that would uh, come underneath the uh, Board of Public Works in whatever form that looks like in the future would help guide the department in how to establish and make that as easy as possible. Uh, in fact, there was a question, I think, by the industry during this that we adjusted and changed in here to ensure that there was uh, a mechanism where they could make the request and then it didn't sit, so that we have to act on it uh, as quickly. I think it's within 60 days. So we, we've defined some of those things in here as well. So in my mind, it's fairly straightforward only because we have 32 years, 33 years of history where we've done that with waste energy. This process looks very similar. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Pecklow. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
fair. Um, also, as someone who's uh, at least elected uh, career has been inside the flow, co flow control district, this is not new, but um, I, I just wanted to express that I appreciate the notion that uh, we are being responsive to those stakeholder conversations around designated waste exemptions, around clarity for the process. Um, I also noted based on the last draft that I saw of this document compared to now, we've uh, been clearer on the date of, um, of the, the initial start of this ordinance and that we're providing you know, four months lead time from the time that we would define the date of when flow control would start to when this notice would, would go out. So um, I really appreciate it. I think, I think absolutely this, there has been a lot of conversation around the equity of the system, uh, and I think that noting uh, that piece is, uh, is an important reflection on the flow control ordinance here. Thank you. Any other questions or comments regarding this item? All right. Another roll call. Go ahead, Dar. Commissioner Yonker? Yes. Commissioner Jaynes? Yes. Commissioner Green? <clears throat> no. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Pakla? Yes. Chair Breevy? Yes. Motion passes. Our next item on the agenda is related to the Kent County Bioenergy <laughs> Facility FNS CNS Agreement Approval. Yeah, sorry for the acronym there. Yeah, I should have read it out. Had, had to <laughs> fit it in. This is a request to approve and recommend to the Kent County Board of Commissioners to approve the construction, service, and feedstock supply agreement with Kent County Bioenergy Facility LLC to be developed at the Kent County Sustainable Business Park. In March 22, the Board of Public Works approved a project development agreement with the Kent County Bioenergy Facility, LLC, to advance 30% design, permits, and regulatory approvals, utilities, term, terms of the service, lease and feedstock agreements to finalize the project cost and public financing needs. Kent County Administration and DPW convened stakeholder meetings to share information and receive feedback from municipal and industry stakeholders. With 30% design completed, guaranteed maximum price and public financing estimates determined, DPW staff recommends the Sustainable Business Park and the Kent County Bioenergy Facility be approved and recommended to the Board of Commissioners. The feedstock construction and service agreement modeled after the successful construction and service agreement at the Kent County Waste Energy Facility establishes the joint terms between the KCBF and the County of Kent to undertake design, construction, operation, and maintenance of the project at the Sustainable Business Park in Door Township, Allegan County, Michigan. The contract documents have been re reviewed as to form by County Legal Counsel. Staff will be in, uh, will provide an overview of the agreement. Staff and Council will be available for questions. All right, thank you. Questions or comments? Or is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Pakla. Support. Support by Commissioner Yunker. Questions or comments? <laughs> Commissioner Pakla. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just, just one piece um, uh, going on the train of reflecting on the appreciation for the process. Um, I recall that during one of our work sessions, there was a question about what happens in the case of uh, default or insolvency of the company. And I was pleased to see inside, built inside of the agreement that there are uh, what I would consider, not a lawyer, but what I, what I would consider sufficient protections uh, should we have to encounter that highly unlikely path in the future. So thank you. Commissioner Yunker. Yeah, Madam Chair, I, <laughs> I, this is part of my role as drain commissioner. I am required by law to be on this board. It wasn't my pick, but I, <laughs> I've, I've always started off, enjoyed having conversation with Commissioner Vonk on talking trash. And, you know, where we are right now with this, they'd be proud. Uh, when they started, and they mean uh, Commissioner Vonk, uh, Commissioner Bile, uh, Commissioner Burkowski, because I and him had many conversations off, off the record. Uh, sometimes I told him you're more Republican than I am, you know. <laughs> so, but I love the great guy, wonderful guy to work with, and we had real good conversations around this. And, and as we look, as they looked at our landfill being filled, way back then they looked at all these options. Where's the best way to go? So a lot of the questions that I hear being brought up now, they did before our time even even happened here. And to keep going back and rehashing that, it's it's been hashed. And I think their direction they gave us was accurate. Uh, they're very wise people that have brought us to this point. And what we're doing right here, I know would make them all very proud because this is what they envisioned. And 
and now it's here. So I just really want to encourage everybody a yes one on this. You know, I plan to give Commissioner Vonk a call after this to <laughs> yeah, give, him up, give him an update. Because I remember when he um, retired, he said, you've got a lot, to, a lot of work to do there. <laughs> so I plan to call him and have a good conversation. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none, Dyer, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Yonker? Yes. Commissioner Jaynes? Yes. Commissioner Green? No. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Pakla? Yes. Chair Breevy? Yes. Motion passes. All right, next item on the agenda is the um, Kent County Biolease Agreement Approval. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request to approve and recommend the Kent County Board of Commissioners approve the property lease agreement with the Kent County Bioenergy Facility, LLC, for property at the Kent County Sustainable Business Park. Kent County DPW owns 250 acres of property for the proposed Kent County Sustainable Business Park, approved as a planned unit development by Door Township. Kent County intends to retain ownership of the developed parcels and enter into long-term leases with developers to process and treat solid waste. The Kent County Bioenergy Facility, a mixed waste processing and anaerobic digestion facility, is proposed to be located on a 40-acre parcel at the Sustainable Business Park. The KCBF is looking to design, construct, and operate the facility and requires a long-term lease. The lease establishes landlord, which is Kent County, and ten tenant obligations including term, taxes, maintenance, utilities, improvements, subletting, damage, insurance, indemnity, remedies, and notices. The document has been reviewed as to form by council. DPW staff and council will be available to answer questions. All right, thank you, Dar. Is there a motion for this item? So moved. Moved by Commissioner Yunker. Is there support? Support. Support by Commissioner Pakla. Questions or comments regarding the lease? Commissioner Burrell. Thank you, Chair Breeby. Uh, I guess a couple things. So, uh, so I see a 25-year lease, and it has no options for renewal. Is that correct? I mean, at least it's not written in the lease, from what I can tell. Is that true, or did I miss something? I would have to double check. Honestly, there's been so many documents across my desk. Uh, RV Coning, who's been assisting us is from Varnum. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, been a minute or two put into that. It yes, yes, a, I'm, this is Harvey Coning with Varnum. That is a correct observation. The lease and the services agreement are set up for 25-year term. Certainly something could be negotiated as they got closer to the end of the term, but there's no automatic renewal there. Okay. So so how, how transparent um, will everybody be with each other on, I guess, how successful they're, they're doing at their site and Obviously, there's a significant investment. I'm not sure if, I mean, obviously, 25 years. I'm, I'm sure even after five, 10 years, some of that equipment will be obsolete. Uh, but uh, what, what's, um, I guess, what's, what's their goal as well? I mean, is this something that they say, wow, this isn't a 25-year thing to us. Uh, we fully anticipate that, that hey, we're going to be here for, for 50, 100 years. I mean, obviously, we can't uh, guarantee that, but... Um, I guess a 25-year-old building still pretty new, um, shouldn't have a lot of wear and tear yet on it. Uh, I guess what's what's everybody's thought on that? I guess so I'll ask you, Neve, to to kind of provide energy as perspective. The, the way I would an answer for the Public Works Department is, we had a, a construction and service agreement, so this is a lease, but I think it, it aligns pretty well with the waste energy facility. Ogden Martin was the developer. Ogden Martin and then Covanta, it's, it's uh, who, who followed them, um, or the new company. So that, le that was signed somewhere in the late 1980s and then was renegotiated in 2008 and then termed out in 2022, actually earlier this year, 23. And, and so there was a renegotiation process for them to operate. Most of the, I think, critical operational aspects between the DPW and the bioenergy facility you'll find in the service agreement. The lease is just a pathway for energy to demonstrate that they have access to the property. All that to say, though, I think Yaniv could probably speak better to the broader question. Thank you. Um, that's exactly right. In fact, we would welcome uh, 
you know, the opportunity to extend beyond 25 is sort of a minimum term in order to be able to uh, secure financing uh, and pay off the capital. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I can't guarantee uh, 50 years, but uh, I'm hoping that I can guarantee at least Andrew and I are around for 40 years more. <laughs> Uh, and we, we would, uh, from a business perspective, uh, and fully welcome uh, extension. Um, and, and as well as to the county's option or choice, a transfer option, which is, which is currently contemplated, whichever, whatever is in the best interest of the county. You know, I just, I just look at this, right? If, if, let's say, again, I, I think when, when you're elected, right, we are, we are elected to lead, right? And, and we got to make some tough decisions sometimes, and not everyone's going to be happy with those decisions. And I guess that's part of... Uh, having a cell phone and email where people can call you and blast you and then tell you they like you or love you or hate you, right? <laughs> so so I would love nothing more. And, I, and again, I hope at energy too as well, right? If, if this moves forward at, at all at all levels, that um, that there is a great deal of transparency where I hope they make, uh, you know, a gazillion dollars. So on a renewal, we can, we can again, renegotiate in good faith that um, helps helps our the residents of Kent County. I mean, this is this has always been a struggle with me, right? At, in my day job, I'm a, a real estate builder, developer. Uh, so to take uh, to take land that we can put in productive use with facilities or homes or 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 just being productive and taxes and um, you know, I, I love that aspect, right? I love I love creating the jobs. And then I have the other aspect of me that uh, you know struggles with some of the constraints and the flow control and, and, and the, the ben businesses and free enterprise. So, I mean, again, there, there is a, a delicate balance here. Uh, I think I've mentioned to lots of people, I, I think on any given day I could be a yes or a no uh, because I see the value too, right? I, I see both sides. So, again, also going forward, I hope that um, we, we do produce enough where maybe they can't uh, even handle it and we have to, again, <laughs> what, do we, what do we do with the rest of this for right now? But I, I do, I do hope uh, that uh, this is just you know, very successful, where we can fill up this business park, where where this is a win-win, and that we can get uh, potentially better lease terms on on other properties uh, moving forward. But do recognize the, I guess, lost leader in this case that uh, it helps us uh, potentially do better. So, again, I, I appreciate the, again the lease terms, and that uh, yeah, there, there's hopefully some renewals in the in the future with some bigger dollars. Thanks, Commissioner. Any other questions or comments regarding this item? All right, seeing none, Dar, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Yonker? Yes. Commissioner Jaynes? Yes. Commissioner Green? No. Commissioner Burrell? Yes. Commissioner Pecla? Yes. Chair Brevy? Yes. Motion passes. That brings us to our next item on the agenda. So thank you for that. Um, our director's report. Dar, what do you have to say? Well, we've got just a thing or two or three going on, but... Um, but I'll try to keep it short because I know it's a long meeting. First of all, I wanted to acknowledge uh, Nick Vanderven, who's been our recycling manager, is now our deputy director. He's a millennial. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but, but, you know, there's going to be that time when we have to, to move forward and move on, and there's always that, that uh, planning for the future. And so Nick's, Nick's been put in that position to, to help lead us operationally um, as we move forward. North Kent, Constru uh, North Kent Transfer Station, uh, Dan Rose, our ops manager. Uh, I think they're going to start setting steel next week. Yes. There is an unreal amount of concrete that's been poured in the last two months. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to divert a couple trucks to my house, but that didn't work. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, sure. Totally kidding. But uh, I'm, uh, it's just stunning on how much concrete is needed to build a facility like that. But they'll start setting steel. And we do have... Um, um, a loop or link that you can actually watch the construction occurring in real time if you want to take a look at that. Uh, AMP Robotics, they're in. They're, they're running. Uh, I didn't ask Nick for any particular update, but uh -huh. yeah, I think the first week they were running at 90% and, I, and they continue to learn with AI, so they're probably in that mid-90% wow. sort of accuracy, wow. which is wow. cool. phenomenal. Awesome. And I believe Kent County was the first facility in the state of. In the Come to the mic. Yeah. I want to see this. You're deputy director, so step up. I want to see this. We need a tour. 
Amp's been around for a long time, but they came out with the Cortex C, so it's actually a significantly smaller robot. And so we were the first ones to put in three on a large scale, and they're wonderful. It's actually kind of scary, like how advanced that AI tech is, because you can watch it live time, how it will learn the material, tell you how many it's missing. If it's missing a specific manufacturer's bottle, it learns that over time and will start pulling it. It's like cheapers. It's kind of crazy how <laughs> advanced that stuff is, but they're they're wonderful. I couldn't say enough good things about them. So come check them out. They're really cool. We can get you up there and see them. But Nick, so, thanks, Nick, sir. you better be careful. Make sure I don't identify you. I know. I know. <laughs> well, it's gonna have a hard time we'll picking be me up. So, us yeah, all we're, the we're in good shape there. Wow. Nick's an Illinois farm boy. It's not yeah, picking it's him not up. Gonna so. pick me up. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. But no, they're really great. So wonderful. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, third, fourth item is uh, starting next week, we'll be repairing uh, the damage mm -hmm. to the recycling center. Uh, as you all know, we decided to knock a wall out the side of the building, cause a bit of an issue. Uh, just a shout out to Pioneer Construction and uh, Fiscal and everyone else who's been alongside us. So those repair, actually those repairs are underway already, but the, the main part of the repair occurs next week when they start um, bringing the cranes in supporting the roof, putting the new panels in. I know it's been a, put a real pinch on our operations, so we've been able to maintain that. Uh, you have a DPW at a glance. I think you'll notice there that commodities uh, continue to be a little softer than they have been in some past years. And then one last thing I wanted to mention is that um, Paul Smith, our operations manager for Waste Energy, isn't here this morning uh, because we're putting new cranes in at the Waste Energy facility. They were flying them in. Earlier this week, um, we'll be back up and operational, I think by Monday, Tuesday. Thank you to the haulers, City of Grand Rapids, and others that I think this is the first time we've ever closed the tip floor for the reason that uh, we had to put a circumference of safety around it because the crane is, they're craning these new cranes in, uh, oxymoron there, to, to uh, yeah, and so for a safety standpoint, we had to close the tip floor. So everyone's been phenomenal. Uh, we're making it through. Um, it's been... 18 months of planning to get to this stage and Granger Construction has been managing that process with vicinity and so we're very appreciative again of our private sector partners that make all this work. And that's my report. All right. Um, thank you. Now, um, any questions on the report at all for DAR? All right. Seeing none. Next item on the agenda is um, public comment. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to comment? Please step forward. You have three minutes. No one? All right, welcome. Join us. Please state your name. Hi, good morning. Uh, Fred Sawyers with WN and City of Grand Rapids, a resident. So I've uh, spoken here before and just wanted to take an opportunity, I guess, to commend you uh, on uh, the process. This has been a long time, I guess, getting to this point. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite an effort, and I know that it will be moving on. And so... Hopefully you enjoy that uh, refreshing uh, reprieve from getting these presentations often. But uh, uh, as I, as I promote, uh, spoke about before, I am supportive of, of the goals that the county has put forth as part of the uh, uh, sustainability park and trying to uh, reach those. Uh, and uh, the, the project that you've looked at here with Energia, you know, it's, if it uh, ends up being passed uh, as both a resident and a uh, industry partner, we will use this to work with our customers to meet their sustainability goals. So I think those are important op options for that. But as we still continue through this process with the Board of Commissioners and uh, looking at it incomplete, I just will continue to communicate that they're uh, to try to make sure that it's an informed decision. I, I think Dar and, and his team has done a great job as far as the presentations and going through all of this. But, to, you know, beyond approving a project that, that is, has a cost of an estimated $400 million, there's those annual costs too that, uh, we're, that you've committed to today and that uh, the flow control, and we've talked a lot about rate equity for the uh, for the, uh, all the communities, you know, we're looking at really a thir $30 million per year increase in disposal costs for the county and all the residents on what we're currently doing. If you take those rates that are put into the presentation and spread those across the full commitment of what will be coming in there, $30 million, you know, it's really, I don't think the six communities looked at rate equity as meaning we're going to equitably be able to pay a lot more 
per ton. So, but uh, you know, I think it, if the community and the commissioners approve that, I th it's just that awareness that it is a significant commitment for for 25 years of that 30 million dollars per year. The other thing that uh, I think is just just that awareness. You know, there was a discussion of what of what are the uh, plans? We have a plan A, which is this program. We have a plan B, which is to build another landfill. And I understand where the uh, the commissioners are with that. There really is another plan C in that uh, the, there are uh, sections of the county that are serviced by uh, private landfills currently. And uh, those five landfills that are owned by private companies around this uh, county that service those areas. If the county decided today to close down not only their uh, their uh, incinerator but also their landfill those landfills would still be able to service all that volume and still provide 30 years of disposal capacity for the county so i'll end at that note so thank you all right thank you anyone else for public comment all right seeing none is there any commissioner miscellaneous commissioner burrell again, thanks uh, chair Brevi. uh again uh you know, it's still very important to me, again, that uh, again, maybe keep on reiterating this as well, that uh, we continue to work with our, our Metro 6 and make sure that we have all of our communities, for the most part, uh, uh, on, on board with us. So, again, I, I hope that does continue and look forward to see the, the other couple studies that, uh, uh, you know, that I requested to see. I think that's important as well. Um, so, uh, again, I just uh, look forward to seeing those. And, again, my... My votes down the line uh, probably depend on on some of those, but again, this is a big step. Uh, you know, fortunately for uh, a couple of you, that uh, this is done, and for four of us, our, our work's to just uh, just beginning. So I know we have uh, a lot of a lot of work and heavy lifting to do. So again, uh, appreciate it, and uh, yeah, look forward to that information. All right, thank you. Any other miscellaneous? to be a part of elevating it to the next level yeah County commissioners yep the work is not done um <laughs> thank you for taking it that's the baton yeah that's right yeah. <laughs> so i just wanted to um thank a few people i have quite the list here actually in moving this process forward and you know i just wanted to thank andrew and yaniv um, steve simmons too for guiding us throughout this process and um, the partnership and Steve Faber for um, jumping in and helping us communicate and understand and wrap our minds around all of this. Um, you know, I spent the last year and a half or so with the um, Sustainable Business Park um, Stakeholder Advisory Group, and it was made up of several municipal leaders. And um, there were a few members that had to, you know, retire during the process. It was a long process. There's a few that had other opportunities and um, had to move off as well. But I'm just going to give a list here. So. Our county administrator, Al Vanderberg, kind of head up that he headed up the committee and was um, a good person at pulling out all the questions and concerns. I really appreciate his involvement. Um, Dar, and then um, Thad Beard from the city of Rockford, uh, former commissioner Dave Bulkowski, Mike DeVries served on the committee for a little while, and Curtis Holt, who actually retired during the process, Mayor Stephen Kepley from the city of Kentwood. Josh Lunger from the Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce, Tom Mahoney from Republic Services, um, Tim Mraz from The Right Place, um, and then we also had members from the City of Grand Rapids, Doug Matthews and James Hurt. Um, Commissioner Pekla joined us partway through, and also um, Greg Madura, who's the supervisor of Alpine Township. So um, that's a, a list of a variety of people from different paths and directions, and we're all able to come together and um, form a general consensus, um, you know, into moving this project forward. And there's many other people too that have played a role in advising us in um, working through this project. So there's still lots of work to be done as we go through the rest of our timeline and check off those boxes. Um, and I look forward to, you know, further conversations. So is there any other commis commissioner miscellaneous? All right. Seeing none, we are adjourned. Thank you.